Hello ladies and gents, Romeo Reviews here, please like, comment, subscribe. This is my review for The Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 11 Episode 14, Lost in Translation. Um, so the episode actually continues on where they're still in Tokyo, but this episode was definitely a more light-hearted one, which I'm really thankful for, i.e. it was basically filler. It was Alright, most of the drama, almost all the drama is over, and now it's time for us to just clean up the mess that we kind of made in the first place. They're going to do a bunch of activities, so I'll get through this really fast, and watch my Grammy review. I'm actually putting up another ASMR video, but it's going to be about the Grammys. I want to do stuff that's a little bit different from what people normally do, so I'm going to do one about the Grammys. It'll be up today. Today is going to be super busy, so just bear with me. The episode starts off with Portia talking to Dennis, and he sent her flowers, and they were really, they were really nice. They were really nice. They were red and white, and so she gives him a call and talks to him for a bit. She's like, everyone knows that she's pregnant now, and they're just going to have a fun girls' day. Apparently, Tanya wanted to do another activity to celebrate Eva um, and her bachelor, because it's supposed to be her bachelorette vacation slash party with the girls and so she takes it upon herself to do an impromptu party and it looks nice it was well catered that that was definitely it was well catered the hotel staff really did their thing with that um slowly but surely one by one they all came in and they're just gonna go and have fun and be lighthearted. and i love portia talks about how her and dennis were looking at rings before she even got pregnant. So, and Candy's just kind of looking like, oh, okay, I guess the relationship's more serious than I thought. Um, Eva eventually comes and Eva's excited. Nene comes in and the energy shifts. Again, we understand why the energy shifts. We just hate that it happened because it's just so, there's just so much going on. But Nene, she, her mood was pretty off for a while. So Tanya was like oh hey and then e nini wasn't giving her any any energy so then tanya i think again she doesn't really know how to handle that type of um people who act like nini acts so then she starts to act weird because for a moment she was like oh hey so what we're going to do and she she was pulling like a hundred on ten and i'm like and everyone's looking at her like okay you can calm down a little bit and, and breathe and and everyone just looked kind of confused because they were looking at Nini. They were looking at Tanya. They were looking at Nini. They were looking at Tanya. Tanya hired a stripper. And the stripper, <laughs> he looked like one of those, um, he looked like one of those wrestlers. N not in size. He wasn't built like a sumo wrestler, but he kind of he looked like he was wearing that garb almost. And I said, really? Eva had that look of, now please stop. It was the funniest thing. And I was like, oh my gosh. Just end. End. Please just end. It was, it was funny. It was funny. And it was a moment for everyone to kind of laugh, not take too seriously. And then the next game was, they're going to dress up like a Harajuku doll um, or girl. That's one of those girls in Japan who have like the, usually wear a different color wig and normally you have like a schoolgirl outfit and then just like have a bunch of um like different designs and clothes on it, it it's hard to explain if i remember i'll put up a picture i'm like i said i'm gonna be busy today so i don't know if i'm gonna remember it definitely sound more like a kid's project than a girl's tri trip thing um so uh for a bachelorette you know party so then Portia was like, well, why don't we use pickles? We use pickles. And Portia, I think she wanted to ha have the girls put the pickles in between the glutes and then drop them in the cup. And I said, okay, we're kind of going down the right path, but let's figure out something else. So then I think it was candy or something said, well, instead, why don't we go and use... It was someone else that said, why don't we go and use the pickles Um you know, pretend like it's a D and position yourselves the way how you normally would. So I think Eva was riding on top of Candy. Uh, you had 
<laughs> Tanya try, <laughs> trying to hit Cynthia from the back. And when I tell you, Cynthia was so stiff. <laughs> she could arch with nothing. <laughs> oh, gosh. I love Cynthia. A mess. A mess. A mess. But it was fun. It was fun. And that's what got Nini, you know, in better spirits and out of her head. And they were able to all have a good time. We thought something bad had happened afterwards because they went to the club. But uh, no, it was just Marlo was stuck. Um, she, I guess she didn't bring her identification so she couldn't get in her room or her key. They allowed her to go in her room because, I mean, there's a camera crew and everything. But she still had to show identification to prove. I said, I like that type of security. Don't don't take me on my word for it. I like that type of security. Um, Nini t finally talks to Greg, and Greg definitely feels apologetic for the way that he was acting. And Nini understands, of course, that Greg was acting the way that he was acting because he's still sick. And apparently, he actually has to do two surgeries. I think he thought he only had to do one. Um, he has to do two in the same day or something, so he wanted to go and reschedule it. And... By this time, Cynthia comes along, and Nini finally got to have her breakdown, and Cynthia was there to support her, and I said, this is all that we needed, and when I say we, I mean, we knew that you were going through it, but it's easier for us to be sympathetic to a breakdown than to have someone go and be rude and be mean, and also kind of say what's going on but not really say it i understand nini's the strong one her family the one that holds it together so we're gonna give her a pass because for the most part the rest of the trip was fine was fine um a miracle happened the ladies were on time and when i tell you their guide was through the moon to the moon through the roof happy thrilled she was like oh my gosh i was like oh my gosh <laughs> On time! Early! <laughs> so now they're going to... I They're going to... I forgot... I forgot exactly what it's called. But it was essentially like a samurai demonstration class. And they were using... Oh, I said, wait a minute. Is that real? I said, oh no. <laughs> oh no. The ladies were coming into the class. And they they were just backing up like, oh, oh, oh. Uh oh, I'm getting a little too close there. I was thinking the same thing. But now it's their turn. Now it's their turn to go and do... But they're using wooden swords. And one person has to be the main attacker. And the uh, person that kills them. Shamari really got into it. Shamari's very fun. She's very fun. She really got into it. And I loved her confessional. She was like... <laughs> I was like more combat style. <laughs> Finish. <him. laughs> now we see Nini again. She's in better spirits. She's talking to Eva, and then she gets this. Eva's grandfather, thankfully, was still alive, so she was gonna just leave the trip as regularly scheduled. Um, and Nini ends up getting this uh, this beautiful flower arrangement and she thought that maybe it was she wasn't sure who it was for um she wasn't really thinking about it but then she read the note and she realized it was from greg and greg had this really nice letter for nini just expressing how much um you know he's sorry and he appreciates her and she's his world and she knows that but there's nothing like hearing it again and so then she breaks down she breaks down thankfully eva's there to you know, support her and comfort her. And Eva's definitely better at that. A lot of the other ladies really don't know how to do that. Um, so that was good that Eva was the one that was there. Now, they're having their last night. I didn't see their, um, I didn't see their, what was it, cultural brand, cultural ambassador. She wasn't with them. So I guess that was it for her. Maybe, maybe she was there to usher them out in the morning not sure but maybe they just didn't want to be stricken to a certain time even though they had dinner so they were stricken to a certain time again everyone shows up it was really nice it um 
and Eva says she appreciates everyone for coming and she wants everyone to go around the room and just talk about, you know, a win and a loss for them this year. Like, what was their biggest issue and what was their biggest win? Candy was like, uh, surrogacy and her businesses are doing well. And Cynthia, it was Mike Hill and her daughter, you know, going away to college. Um, and, and at one point, and I really appreciated this, uh, what was it? Portia was talking about how she didn't think that she was going to find love. She wasn't sure about the kid situation. She gave up on what she really wanted. And then her, uh, her dude, Dennis, came along. And so then Candy, she apologized to Portia. And I thought that was huge. She apologized to Portia because she realized that she wasn't trying to hurt Portia or anything. What she was trying to do was she was trying to, uh, she didn't know him and she said that like Dennis was super nice to her even after he heard about the other, all that stuff and you know, she sees how happy Portia is and at one point they were close and she just feels bad for how everything has transpired and she, when she was talking about Portia and her relationship it was because she didn't think that it was serious <clears throat> and she just wants her to know that she really is happy for her she's happy that she's getting everything that she always wanted and she just hopes that one day they can really be in a better place um and that one day should start now and Portia agreed and Candy was crying and we know Candy doesn't get emotional so I know she meant that and Everyone knew that she meant that. So then we finish it all up. And now the rest of the season looks like it's going to be mighty interesting. Or interesting enough. So that's it. Please like, comment, subscribe. Again, new ASMR videos. I think for time purposes, I'm going to have to split them up. So I may just do... Um, you'll see. Go on my channel. There will definitely be some role playing. And it's about the Grammys. Thanks.